Hey everyone, April Dunham here. Today I want to talk to you about how you can do security trimming inside your Power Apps. This is a common need that I see a lot in Power Apps to be able to lock down certain aspects of your form. So one common scenario is you have some kind of approval process built into your form and you only want designated people with that level of permissions to be able to approve or reject an item inside your app. Or maybe there are certain fields inside the app that only admins or certain people should be able to fill in. Like anything with Power Apps, there are multiple ways that you can handle this. I have a corresponding blog post to this where I outline some additional methods to handle this. But today I want to talk about a method that I came up with. And the main advantage of doing it this way is it doesn't require any additional licensing or flow runs or anything like that. It's all done via a SharePoint list and native Power Apps capability. So before we dive in, here's the intro. All right, so first let's take a look at the app that we're going to be using to demonstrate this functionality. This is a simple order form application. So I have a list here of orders. I can dive into one and I can see the information about that order and any um, associated order items. So there is some parent-child relationship stuff going on here. But what we want to accomplish is these approve and reject buttons should only be available to certain users that we designate as approvers. So the first step to get this working is to actually go back to SharePoint. So in the case of my app, the data source is a SharePoint list. Your actual app data doesn't have to be um, a SharePoint list data source. You can just use SharePoint to do this security piece. And actually the same method would work with a, a SQL, Azure SQL as well. You could have a separate table that you could use and store the values or the names of the people that should have the permission and use the same method in an Azure SQL as well. But today I'm gonna to show you how to do it with SharePoint. So in SharePoint, you'll just wanna create a new custom list. And I've actually kept it simple here. So I'm just utilizing the built-in title field and I'm putting in the names of the people who should have approval access. Now, obviously, if you're a large company and you have several people you could, that could potentially have the same name, you probably want to use something else like an email address here instead to trigger off of something that is truly unique. So just create the list and populate it with your approvers. And now we're gonna go back to our app in Power Apps. And the first thing we need to do is we want to query that list and see if the current logged in user exists in that list. So then we'll know that that person is a designated approver. So to do that, we'll go to our app and navigate to this on start property here. And you'll see I already have a function in here and I'm using a clear collect to create a collection of accepted approvers. So I'm giving my collection a name and then inside there, I'm filtering my approvers data source, which I've already went in and added to my app by clicking view and data sources. And I've added my approvers data source there. So I'm filtering that and I'm saying where title, that's where I was holding the values, equals user, because that's the shortcut in Power Apps to be able to get the current user's information, dot full name. So I'm matching on that. If you did the other approach and you use their email instead, you would just change this to dot email and it would match on that. So that will output these to a collection. And if you want to confirm that this is returning results, you can go to one of your pages here and insert a gallery and bind that gallery to your accepted approvers collection. I'll just put in a title field there and make it show my title field. Okay. Um, and when you're debugging a Power App like this, if you haven't used the on start before, notice there's nothing in here. And that's because the app on start hasn't loaded yet. So what you'll need to do is go to the app on start, click the three dots, 
and then select run on start. This will execute whatever formulas, functions that you have in your on start. And notice as soon as I do that, my name pops up because I was in that list of approvers. So I know that it's returning results. So definitely test that before you move on to the other pieces to make sure that that's working. Now to actually hide the buttons or restrict the buttons so that only people in this approvers list can access them, you will go back to our screen here. So in this case, it's on my edit screen. And that's where I have my two buttons. Now we could do this multiple ways. We could either just hide the button physically so they don't even see it if they're not an approver, or we can just disable it. So maybe still let the user see it, but show that it's grayed out and in a disabled status right now. So we'll start with just hiding it first and how to do that. So if we wanna hide this approve button, we can select the button, go to your properties panel here and select the visible property from this list. And what we can do here is just put in a if statement. So we can say if, and then we can use our is empty. So is empty allows you to check a collection or a table. So I can pass in the name of that accepted uh, provers collection that we created on our app on, on start. So I can say if that collection is empty, meaning there's no matching approver for the current logged in user, then the visibility of this control should be false. It should hide. Otherwise, if it's not empty, meaning there is an approver in there that matches my existing user, true to show the item. All right, so that's all you have to do to show or hide that. Now, if instead we want to always have this control visible, but have it shown as disabled for users that don't have this permission, we can click on our properties pane and go to the display mode property. And you'll see I already have a condition in here. So we can use that same if and is empty check to see if our collection is empty or not. And if it is, we can set this to view, meaning you can't actually click the button, it's just viewable. Else, if it's not empty, then we can set it to edit, meaning someone can click the button. Now, one caveat to this is when you do that, you still, your user doesn't have a visual cue that this isn't a clickable item. So if I were to open this and I didn't have access, it would appear that this is a clickable item because you know it's green and looks, but when I hover over it, I wouldn't be able to actually click it. Nothing would happen. So if you want to give your users that visual cue that, hey, this isn't a clickable button, it's disabled because you don't have permissions, you want to also go to your button in the properties pane and go to your fill option. You can do that same if statement. So basically if that collection is empty, you can make the button gray, else show it as green. So just to prove that this works, let's go back to our provers list and I'm going to remove myself and we'll refresh our data source here. And remember, it's still seeing me as having the access because the app on start hasn't ran again to do that check for our collection with the filter. So we can run that again. And notice when we do, that approve button has disappeared because I'm no longer in that list. And you'll see here on the reject button, I didn't hide the reject button, I just made the display mode view. So this is what it would look like. I did that same formula where if it is empty, set display mode to view and then the color to gray in the fill. So that's what that would look like. To me, that would be my recommendation is to leave it that way so that the users know there's buttons there that they just don't have access to. That's all there really is to this approach. As you can see, this can be used in any of your controls. So for example, if I wanted to restrict this card where only approvers can insert data into it, I can do the same thing either with the visible property of the actual control or the display mode. And I can use that same formula here. I hope you found this tip helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Happy power wrapping and I'll catch you in the next video.